data time. So let's start with the global map. One of my favorites. This is from Johns Hopkins. Okay, let's go to basically, you know, there was a time where the discussion was, oh, this is a uh, a Chinese problem. This is a Chinese uh, something going on in China. As you can see, this is freaking global as it gets. Of course, you have a lot in Asia, but look at Europe. And look at the Middle East. Uh, Australia. You know, this thing has spread uh, South America, United States. Remember when uh, there were people saying, oh, you know, hey, this is just like a, like a flu. Uh, only a few cases will go away once the weather heats up. Mm. I don't know, because the weather already in South America and Argentina is probably warmer than the U.S. And in South Africa, the weather is warmer than the U.S. And, you know, basically the Southern Hemisphere, I mean, Australia is pretty warm relative to the U.S. So I'm not sure if just waiting till uh, spring warms up will naturally or miraculously solve this problem. Um, so that's a global look. Now, here's another chart. This is probably one of my favorites. This shows you the number of cases in China, uh, and you can see it's kind of flattening out. If you guys didn't uh, hear this, you may want to check out the New York Times podcast, The Daily, and they did a whole special on how countries are handling the coronavirus. And one of the key insights was that um, in China, they basically have focused on um, isolation of people who are even just uh, have a fever. They also did way more testing than uh, than other countries. But the thing is, like the U.S. guidance is, oh, if you're sick, go ahead and stay home. And that is good because it reduces the number of people that, like at work that um, will contract what you have. But the problem is, and this is what the Chinese figured out, was, well, when you stay at home, you're generally going to infect the rest of your, um, the rest of your family. And so basically, if you have a family unit of four or five, one person's quote unquote, self isolates at home, it's like times four, because the whole family is likely to get it. So what China does is, once you have uh, signs of infection, you get put into an isolation kind of hospital. This is where you see these like, huge, you know, basketball courts of beds lined up. And everybody that has it, has to go there. And then when they show extreme symptoms, like they have trouble breathing, they go to the hospital. And that's why that orange line um, seems to be kind of tracking to the top. And, you know, the Italians have, have not taken that approach. They basically just shut it down. But everybody's sort of um, sheltering in place and basically infecting the rest of their family. So that's that's the rub with this thing. Like if you really want to kind of flatten the curve, uh, you can't just stay home and keep the kids from school. That's good. But if you're if you have it or your kids have it, uh, hanging around with mom and dad and brother and sister and grandma, probably not a good idea. Um, but I, I get that. Like, I don't think the U S really, I don't think we have set up places where people who, uh, are infected can go. Um, I think the advice is just stay home. So at a minimum, if you have Corona and you are at home, 
you should not just stay home. You should kind of stay in your room and probably say multiple meters or yards away from your brothers and sisters and parents and grandparents and stuff and spouse probably don't want to be sleeping in the same room as your spouse. Um, all right. So let me go back to, uh, now what the green chart, the green line is the recovery line. So you we're about to reach a point where there's as many people who have recovered as people in China who, uh, are affected. Um, but the yellow line is the non Chinese cases. And as you can see here, you know, there was a point where China had like orders of magnitude more than the rest of the world. And the rest of the world is not only catching up, but it looks like it will exceed China. Um, this is why it's kind of weird. Like you have stories about um, Jack Ma, the famous Chinese uh, entrepreneur, you know, billionaire offering to donate masks and test kits to the U.S., um, because, you know, basically the U S is, um, well, it's in a different place than China. Let's just say that. Okay. So now let's look at, uh, some more data. God, I love this dashboard. Okay. Look at the total, uh, deaths count. Certainly China is leading 3000, but Italy has a third as many deaths as China. Okay. But Italy, you could argue, well, no, you can't argue, it is. It is, uh, it is much smaller than China. It's way smaller than a third of China. So you wonder, like, why are the Italians having so many more deaths? Now, it could be, um, oh, actually, this is China. Yeah, this is Hubei, China, not all of China. Um, but it looks like for all the deaths, they're most for China, they're mostly in Hubei. Uh, so Italy is almost as many deaths as as Hubei province, which is the province where Hunan is, I think. And then you've got Iran as number three, Espana, number four, France, South Korea, and then the, the state of Washington, Washington state in the U.S. is right up there, more than Henan, China, more than Japan. There are more deaths in Washington state than in Japan. There's now 11 deaths in Switzerland, so that's kind of crazy, given uh, that I am coming to you live from Switzerland. In fact, uh, I just got a text message from my wife saying that one of my one student at my kid's school, his father has tested positive. So <sighs> it's uh, it's about to get real. Um Let's see. What else is there interesting on this chart? Uh, then the recoveries. Let's see the recovery to death rate. So Italy has as many deaths as it has had recoveries. China has had uh, 20 times as many recoveries as deaths. Are there any countries where they, yeah, wow, to have same number of deaths as recoveries is a, Un, you know, disconcerting trend for sure. All right. Um, let's see here. Daily cases. So the red is the new confirmed cases. So we had 16,000 new confirmed cases. I suspect that's undercounting be due to the um, testing capabilities. Um, and then the green is a recovery. So there are more people being tested and confirmed than there are people being recovered. So we are definitely not uh, out of the woods on this one. It seems to be getting worse. If you look at um, Corona tests per country, uh, you can get a sense of the amount of testing that's being done. And let me just show you a chart here about that. Here it is. Um, stand by for sharing. Let's look at the test per country. 
So here, how many people have been tested per capita? So per uh, million people. The South Koreans are testing like cray cray. <laughs> They're testing 3,700 people uh, per million. The Chinese are also a few thousand. The Italians are 800. The Israelis, 400. Netherlands, 400. UK, 400. Japan, 66. And uh, US is five per million as of March 8th. Now, maybe there's more recent data because um, hopefully our testing has uh, increased. This is as of March 9th. Where's U.S.? U.S. is now, okay, so the U.S. as of March 9th got to 26 per million. And the South Koreans are at 4,000 tests per million. Uh, let's go to the source. The CDC. Great. So what are the CDC tests telling us? Um... Well, this is total specimens is around 2,000. Oh, and then it dropped. Now it's down to about 500 per day. Uh, that's a little concerning. Uh, let's go here. Yeah. Um, there were 2,000 on March 9th, March 10th, 1,000. March 11th, 400. March 12th, six tests. Um, this is the CDC, the Center for Disease Control data. Huh. That's a little concerning that the quality of the data is um, so... I'm, I can't believe this number that the government is giving us. I cannot believe there were only six tests. Um... What are those little footnotes mean? Data during this period are incomplete. Okay, well, that's good. So the last date we have full data was March 8th. It's now March 14th. So the CDC doesn't have up to, it looks like a six day lag for having data. I don't know about you guys, but that doesn't inspire a ton of confidence in how um, how we're kind of running this. Like, where where is the data? Like, why why is this data not available until a week later? Like, why is there a six day lag for U.S. data? This is America. Like, we have the best technology. We have the most money. What the well, let, let's see. Let's see. Maybe we're being too hard on the on the U.S. Um, let us look at uh, U.K. data. Maybe everybody has a long lag. Oh, U.K. is just tweeting out. On March 10th, the U.K. tested 26,000 people. And on March 10th, the U.S., we tested how many? We tested 1,400. So England has tested more than all of America. Oh, but in fairness, the U.S. data is incomplete. So maybe we tested more, but we just don't know because we don't, we don't share that data on a I guess in a timely way. Um, I don't know about you guys, but what the, what the, how is, how is the most powerful country in the world with the most technology so opaque about data? I mean, Trump can tell talk to us about, I'm sure he can tell us exactly, down to the person, how many people were at his last rally. I don't care. 
Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Let's just breathe for a second. All right. Um, now, Let's now look at uh, more detailed information about where in the U.S. this is happening. Uh, let's share now every known corona case in the U.S. Now, you have to look at this, this, this data with a grain of salt because if we're not testing people, it's hard to know for sure What's going on? I mean, basically, this is uh, this is business 101. Like, if you don't have the data, you don't know what the hell's going on. With the data that we have, what you'll find is this is no longer a Seattle problem. Um, you see some blooms here, of course, in Seattle. But you also see it happening uh, and being quite a problem in... The Bay Area, Southern California, like, whoa, look at the tri-state area, New England, um, Florida, Southern Florida, Northern Florida. Where is uh, Idaho looks okay, North Dakota. You know, uh, Texas is going to, it looks like it's, I mean, once you reach some critical mass, uh, it's, this is this is why I think the um, stuff like banning flights is probably like might have happened earlier, um, but it's almost like well the the horse is out of the stable. Um, so yeah, if you're in America, in any of these states, uh, you're you're you know. We're all at risk. Let's just say that. Okay. So that is the uh, US chart. Next, I would like to share with you oh, data on how concerned people are about um, this coronavirus. So this is from 538. And what do we know here? This is a share of respondents who said they were either very or somewhat concerned about themselves, their family members, or community members um, contracting the coronavirus. Overall, about half of America has some concerns. What's most interesting now, you would argue like they should probably be more concerned given the charts that we just looked that we just looked at. And by the way, those charts were going up even with incomplete testing. You know, that's way more serious than that. But anyway, um, what's also interesting is that many Republicans uh, do not seem to be concerned. Uh, other than the USA Today poll, as low as 20% of Republicans don't think this is really a big deal, um, that uh, a third of Republicans uh, in the Economist YouGov poll uh, consider this not uh, even somewhat concerning. So why? I suspect it is because those Republicans consume their news from Fox. And until recently, Fox has really downplayed this. And I believe, and of course the president has as well. And I believe the reason is um, because the president always associated uh, any kind of cases of Corona with some judgment about him. So in a weird way, he uh, he didn't want to do it. Oh, uh, Ninja saying maybe people don't panic that easily. That's true. That's true. Uh, and then uh, Rubix is saying, well, maybe maybe it's because the Republicans are in the Midwest and they're not in uh, the major metropolitan areas. That is true as well. 